Hi, my name is John Feig, and today we're going to talk about app indexing and deep linking, and what the difference is between them, how would you use them, why would you use them, stay tuned. <laughs> Let's start off with the difference between deep linking and app indexing, since I think this is a point of confusion for a lot of developers, and it seems like they're kind of fuzzy, like what the difference is between these two concepts. Deep linking is actually really old, it's been around since I think the beginning of Android, and all it is, deep linking, it's just you click a link and it opens in your app. So it's telling the Android system, hey, I can handle this sort of scheme and this is my, my host name and when somebody clicks a link, don't send it to the browser, I'll open it in my app. That's all deep linking is. App indexing is then just reporting back to Google what you see on the screen. So you're in, you know, you're looking at some content on a web page, you're looking at a news story, you're looking at a blog post, you're just telling Google, this is the URL, this is how I get to it on my app, and the user's visiting that. That's all app indexing is. And when you use these two things together, it allows you to do a couple things. So you can get uh, autocomplete search results um, in the Google search bar. And the other thing that it gets you is when a user searches uh, a search term and you show up in those search results, you'll get a nice little app badge and a potential install button. Um, on there. So if uh, if the user ha has your app, they'll just see the app badge, they can click on it, it'll say the, the app is installed. Um, if they don't have your app yet, you get the app badge and it'll say install um, and or get or something like that. And then the user can click on that, take it to the Play Store, uh, it opens up the page in the Play Store, they install your app there, and then instead of having an open button, they have a continue button. And what that does is it takes them right to the content in your app. Um, so it's really handy. Uh, but that's that's the basic difference between deep linking and app indexing. Deep linking is how you're telling the system, I can open these links in my app. App indexing is just reporting back to Google the activities that the user's done in your app. I'd like to give a little bit of an overview of what's involved in getting this set up before um, we jump into how to do it. First thing that I'm going to assume is you have a website with some content. So this video and talk is a little bit more focused on people who have both websites and apps. Um, if you're just doing an app, then uh, there might be some, some slightly different things that you have to do. I haven't run through those examples quite yet. What you're gonna do if you have both a website and an app is you first go to the Google Search Console. You register your domain. You, you wanna make sure that um, you register both the HTTPS and HTTP versions of your site, as well as any like subdomains like www or uh, anything else that you might have um, anything that shows up in the search results, anything people link to, you need to make sure it's covered in the search console. That's really key. Uh, next, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna go into your app, you're gonna implement in your manifest the intense filter. So you wanna make sure that you're handling these things. Uh, any link for your site that you wanna open in your app, you have to specify in the intense filter in your manifest. Next, in your activity, you basically handle intents fired at you that have your uh, your URLs in them, and you do the work of actually opening up and presenting that material. However, you're going to do that. Uh, once that material is presented, you're going to fire off some uh, API calls to the app indexing API. You're going to tell it, "I'm starting to view this content." But once you're finished viewing content, your the user is leaving. You fire off an end command to the app indexing API. Very simple. Uh, from there you need to publish your app. So it's, you, you can't actually do a lot of the steps without publishing your app. Um, you can test some stuff, but to get the full, you know, kind of end-to-end -end experience, it's gotta be published. So do that. And then in the Play Console, there's a way to verify URLs there. And you're gonna just basically put in the same properties that you registered before in the Search Console. And the same, properties that you're handling in your intense filter. You need to do this in all those places. Then, once that's done, there's one last step. You go back to the Search Console, so the Google Search Console, not in the Play Developer Console. In the Google Search Console, you're going to register your Android app there. So it's you create a new property, and it's android-app colon slash slash, and then your package name, as opposed to like HTTP slash slash your website. Um, this is your you know Android app, your package name. Um, and then, that's like a special thing there, and it shows up differently than your web properties do. So we've talked a little bit about app indexing versus deep linking, what the difference is between those things. We've talked a little bit about the, you know, kind of the basic overview of kind of what's involved, all the steps. And now, so let's jump into uh, how to actually implement this. So we've got 
First, we'll do the deep linking part. So we've got the Android manifest and you have your activity. And in your activities definition in the manifest, you have an intent filter that basically shows here's, you know, here's the couple uh, URL types that I handle. And the actual code for this is gonna be in the blog post. So if you wanna copy paste code, go there. The second part of this is the activity side. Once you've you know, launched into the app, your activity is the thing that's gonna be handling this intent firing at it. And on start, you basically get the data from the, acti uh, the intent, you get the ac action, and you make sure that those things match up with what you expect. It's really simple. And then you just kind of handle uh, opening the content. Okay, we have a few things for app indexing. In the build.gradle file, you're gonna to need to add a dependency on the app indexing and in Google Play services. In the manifest, you need to also tell it that you're using Google Play services and you, know, you tell it what version. In your activity, the same activity that you're gonna be showing the content in, grab a new a Google Play services client that's gonna be, you know, that same client is gonna get reused all the time, so you create and non-create. And then in OnStart, uh, whenever you load up your content, you're called app indexing, API and say, I'm starting to look at this URL and here's the URI inside my app to get to the same content. Um, and that basically, you know, if you're doing it for a public, uh, public website, it just ties those two together. You, you tie the public URL to the local content, uh, the app URI, or you can actually just do this like just in app stuff with the app URI. Um, and I'm not as clear on what that buys you if you're just doing it in app. I think it's for the autocomplete. I don't know if you get the full search results if it's just in-app stuff. And then when you finish your session, you're gonna call uh, appindexapi.end with whatever content you're currently looking at at the end. Uh, and again, all this code is gonna be on the blog. I also have a GitHub um, sample of this uh, that's kind of a full demo that you can take a look at. If you're wondering how to test this, there's actually a really simple utility that's built into your phone, um, which you can access through ADB Shell and you just are firing off intents with uh, an action and data and a package name. It's very, very simple. Um, again, the code will be in the blog. We're gonna finish up with just a little quick uh, why you might wanna do this. Uh, there's two reasons, two basic reasons, user acquisition and user retention or re-engagement. The user acquisition thing, well, both of them go through search, right? So there's tons of apps out there now. Uh, there's about a million apps in the Play Store and it's getting hard to find stuff that you want, right? You don't always know that there's an app for, you know, looking at the thing that you wanna look at. Uh, what's more, when you're looking for some piece of content, you certainly don't know that that piece of content lives at a certain site and then that site has an app because you're searching for it, right? So you're gonna do your Google search, you're gonna look for, you know, recipe for uh, chocolate chip cookies. Uh, you're gonna see that, like, say all the cooks has this recipe and you can install the app and, and take a look at it. Uh, so you do that and that's that's the user acquisition side, right? If you don't have that app. Um, and if you do have the app, it's the same thing, it's like, except for that you can just open it straight up in the app um, and not need to install it. Sure, the user could click through and look at it on the web, um, fine, but some users prefer to look at stuff in apps and this allows them to do that and it gives them like a really clear path on how to go from search result to app uh, you know, if they're gonna install the app, then it actually allows them to like follow all the way through to the content and get there and then, you know, now they have your app. Also imagine, you know, if you've done this a few times as a user, you've got a few of these apps installed, like places that you kind of regularly might go for content, things that you might regularly see. And then, you know, you start searching and now you're finding like, oh, you know, like there's a bunch of results and I have this app, so that's the results I'm gonna go to as opposed to somebody else. Right. So you might start preferring to go to uh, content where there's an app. Um, so that maybe will help a little bit more on the, on the retention re-engagement side. Finally, if you're an app that doesn't have content, you're not like a newspaper, you're not you know, a blog, you're like a utility app, this can help by allowing you to do web SEO to drive app installs. And I'll explain. If you have a website already, or if you don't, make one. Uh, that just has like a home page and about page. You tell people, you know, all about your great app and what it does, all the features and why they should install it and all this stuff. You can mirror that content right in your app. Just add another activity with a web view and handle, you know, people clicking on your website in your app. Okay, now you've got the deep linking down. And now you just tell Google people are visiting those things in your app. So that drives, you know, people if, if they're seeing uh, you know, if they're searching the web, 
for a utility, as opposed to going to the Play Store, if they're searching the web for this utility, they can find you there and they can install you straight from the Google search results. And you can drive that traffic through SEO. Um, it's something that SEO is very hard to do in the Play Store, uh, but it's well known on the web. So that might be um, another benefit for, for this for people who don't have uh, content-based apps. All right, thanks for watching. Check out the blog for um, all the code and links to the, the demo project. Thank <music> you.